Hey, how y'all doing? This is Jeff Loveland of Faithful United, and we are here with special guest Marcus Brown of Release Inc. How you doing, Marcus? Doing good, Jeff. Thank you. Man. Now, we're so excited to have you here. This is episode 51, we the go. start of season two of The Journey. Nice. And we first, just, first one? First uh, episode? First one of the second season, so go. cool. what a good way to start off. Yes, sir. Um, you know, it's exciting to be here. Uh, we'll share about Marcus a little bit more here in a little bit, but... Uh, let me tell you what I know about Marcus, and that is whenever we get together, it's like God's presence is there. We help each other, We iron sharpens iron. Uh, every time we leave the conversation, uh, we grew that much more. And you do that wherever you go, whether it's at church, whether it's with release, whether it's in a community, uh, discipleship, man, I'm excited to be here with you and just share your story. Amen. Thank you, brother. Um, this is the journey. We like to share how God's moving in churches and ministries. Mm. We like to show a message of hope. And we just want to share more about what you guys do and how people can get connected. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, so with let's that, Marcus, do you want to share a little bit about yourself and um, yeah. how God has moved in your life? Mm. Yes, sir. Well, um, for those that are watching, we are currently on Better Together campus. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful campus. It's like a ministry hub right here in North Omaha. Yeah. Um, a little bit about myself and how I got introduced to the campus. Um, it started uh, volunteering with Release in 2007 with mm -hmm. their mentoring program. Mm -hmm. um, I just was released from jail, uh, facing some very serious charges. I was facing 60 years for my ridiculous activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was released from jail, um, I heard about the opportunity to be a mentor in the community. Wow. And I just knew instantly I had to get jumped, just jump yep. right in. Yep. So I contacted Woody here at Release, and um, that's where my journey started with, with the ministry and this campus. Wow. And, and my journey. You know, though, you're moving mightily in God's kingdom. But sometimes people, I think, when something happens or their life goes in a certain direction, they're like, you know what? God can't use me anymore. And I can't say that can't be any further from the truth. God can use each and every one of us. We just have to be a willing vessel. That's right. And to seek Him and all that we do. So I just love you sharing that right now. Amen. Uh, that doesn't define anyone on previous actions. It's about where you go forward with it. Yeah, it's also a testimony to the... the, the, the the strength, the reach, and the grace that the Father has yeah. on us. Yeah. That uh, no matter the choices that, or that he, there's a redemption story if we choose him and uh, we Amen. walk in obedience. Amen. So uh, Release Inc., it used to be called Release Ministries. Yeah. And do you just want to kind of share about where the vision has been and kind of where it's going uh, sure. now and in the, even in the future if you would like to? Absolutely. So yeah, Release, Release Ministries. Release Inc. Um, Release has been around for 25 years. Um, not biased because I work there, but I will say this: that they're just they're a really well kept best secret. Yes. Um, we at Release have been working with families and youth in the city with trauma, crisis, abuse for over 25 years. Wow. That in and of itself is nuts. Right. Um, right. Here in Omaha, there's a lot of need. Mm -hmm. in the family nucleus in the city um mentoring slash discipleship mm -hmm. um and some new adventures that we're doing at release is uh we have a social work program we call it our cbi community-based initiative mm -hmm. and that basically is we're we're trauma and abuse social workers so when the state removes a family um when the state removes kids from a family they mm -hmm. bring in services immediately mm -hmm. and so release our staff that works with those types of situations probably there's maybe eight to ten of us right full-time and then a bunch of part-time um, parenting time workers nonetheless man we're all about coming into families at a time of crisis mm -hmm. a time of trauma in their life mm -hmm. and just walking it out with them mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, you know my church we are gathering for a meeting to come together and just kind of um, just grow as a church and uh, the place we, we went to meet, uh, you guys had a, uh, just got done with having a meeting of kind of exactly helping people go in that direction and train them up. And uh, you don't just put people in the fire, you train them up to know what's to come, how to go after this and how to do it the right way. Um, as you mentioned, it's almost like a kept secret, this 
ministry that you guys do, but my goal is to let more people know about it and get connected. Amen. What's some of the best ways people can connect to this and, and just mm. jump in and serve or, or um, use their God-given gifts? Oh, wow. That's a great question, Jeff. Um, if you're watching this or if you know someone that has a heart for those who are behind the jail cell, mm -hmm. those who um, maybe want to mentor a youth mm -hmm. uh, with whatever type of background that youth might have, whether it's the justice system, single parent home, adoption, foster care. Release offers two types of ways to get a uh, volunteer. Uh, we have an institution part of our ministry where it allows volunteers from the community to actually go inside the jails wow. or the detention centers and minister to the kids. Mm -hmm. um, if you just think about that on a level, that's just nuts. Right. That yeah. the community can go inside of a detention center right. and bring God's word. Right. Um, so if you're interested in that, we could um, we could facilitate that. Um, my biggest my biggest call, my biggest ploy, my biggest heart would be mentoring mm -hmm. um, slash discipleship. Mm -hmm. And Jeff, if I can just speak on that for a yeah, second. Yeah, actually, please do. That'd um, be great. Here in Omaha, there's 12, from what I know, there's 12 main mentoring programs. Mm -hmm. And each one of them doing good work, mm -hmm. whether it's teammates in this school or Girls Inc. up the street, mm -hmm. up the street with girls in this community. Uh, whether it's the Ollie Webb Center, Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. Hope Center, Release. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good mentoring programs. Right. <clears throat> but we all know, especially children of God and believers, that if the message of Christ isn't being shared mm -hmm. and that youth doesn't receive Christ, mm -hmm. then what does that really mean for their eternity? Right. And so to have faith-based mentoring, to be, to be tuned into the Father and teach young men and women about what mentoring looks like in Christ, through mm -hmm. Christ, with the help of a, an adult, a mentor. Mm -hmm. That's powerful, man. Without giving too much information or names or privacy issues, what is one of the greatest stories of mentoring or discipleship that you have seen without with sure. still keeping it private? Wow. <laughs> I just dropped a bomb on you. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll give you a minute. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. It's happening all the time everywhere and and I also think someone um, can walk into a discipleship program and be like I don't have much to offer here except my story of how God has moved mm. and to me that right there is gold sure, in the absolutely. kingdom it is it is my wife and I have a poster hang up in our house and it says so you think God can't use you mm -hmm. and then it has a list of all of these trailblazers in the Bible that the Lord's used yep. David was yep. a murderer yeah this person was that. Mm -hmm. This person was a drunk. This mm -hmm. So what that tells us is that the Father uses normal, ordinary people. Mm -hmm. um, the book is, the Bible is full of just those who have blazed the trail mm -hmm. that, uh, that I use as inspiration in today's life, um, especially in the environment that we live in and the society that we live in. Right. To go back to your, your question, Jeff. Um, <laughs> this is where the Holy Spirit moves. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Again, not to be biased, but at release, in the 20 years that we've been doing faith-based mentoring right here in Omaha, mm -hmm. we've matched up over 820 individual mentor matches. Wow, that's impressive. So praise the Lord that 820 kids, right. whoever they are, wherever they're at yep. in life, whatever their story is, whatever junction that they found themselves needing a mentor, we were able to bring up 820 different mentors with 820 different right. kids. I must say this. You guys do so much for so many other people. You're about helping them. But when you are sharing these stories, this is not a, um, you're not being about self. And so every time he's given these examples, I know you have all these things going through your mind, but yeah. my goal is to share exactly what you guys are doing. So when you, <laughs> you humbly answer that answer, I just want people to know this is not a, well, let me show how we shine. Not no, uh, God is shining here, and it's important to know that. Yeah. So thank you for just giving an honest answer. Yeah, brother. Amen. Um, you know, what do you think is one of the greatest stumbling blocks for someone to get involved in um, mentoring or discipleship? Or what do you think that is? Because there's a lot of things where we say, you know what? I would like to help. I just, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, Jeff. 
I love your questions, man. <laughs> um, I believe one struggle is, is that <laughs> we live in a society today that tends to be about self, Amen. even in the yeah. church world. Yeah. So whether it's the world or the church world, it's very <laughs> there's a easy. lot of truth in this. Yes. It's very easy to be about self. Yes. I'll share this with you, just some vulnerability. My wife and I went to Cape Coral, Florida last mm -hmm. month, right? Went there for seven or eight days, Fort Myers area, mm -hmm. beautiful area. And, and I'll put this out there publicly, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But for three days, I struggled with coveting. Seeing all this fancy wancy, yeah. yep. seeing all these things, yep. the flesh wanting yep. the, the this, the boat. The, and I had to repent. Like, mm -hmm. wow, Father, I, within mm -hmm. three days, I had an aisle form. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question about and to answer your question, I think that it's very easy to be about self. Yes. It's very easy to be maybe narrow-minded in our ability to be used as a vessel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is a reminder for me later, because I watch these later, I put them on YouTube, and maybe someday I'll write a book on all these episodes. You should. But um, me personally, right now, and this kind of goes with this, I think too many times we think we have to do this. Right or God can't move. Hmm. Uh, we have to grind, we have to go after this, we have to do this now, 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 otherwise it's gonna fail. Or what if we just say, God, we'll go on your time. Come on. Uh, we'll move when you want us to move. We will slow down when you tell us to slow down. And <laughs> we can take it only a couple steps further, or we can wait on you and you can take it way further. Hmm. Right now on Faithful United, I've taken a couple steps back for a little bit just to focus on me, my family, and anything that God's doing. Amen. Knowing that God can take that and take it right back and even that much further. Yeah. And I think that goes with mentoring and all that. I think we realize we have to do this now, now, now. Or what if we just do a little bit at a time, right where we're at, right with whoever's in front of us, sure, sure. right with the opportunity that's in front of us. Absolutely. What if someone calls you right now and says, you know what, I just need to talk to someone. Do you say, I got no time for that? Nope. Or do you pick up the phone and say, you are worth it? Absolutely. Again, we live in a culture that's about us. Right. So right. it'd be very easy to say, hey, I, I'll pray for you. I'll get back to you. Yeah, right. Um, hey, yeah. Jeff, thanks for the message. I'll be praying for you. I don't, I'm not about that. I want to right. I want to yeah. check back in. Hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. How is the situation yeah. coming? How is the Lord moving? Yeah. How, and just to go back to this, Jeff, I believe that um, you were talking about just we live in a society where the reverence to the Father is getting less and less mm -hmm. I feel. yes and so if someone's watching this or someone has a question of how could I be used or how do I dot 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 whether mm -hmm. it's mentoring or anything right just open your eyes and look around you <laughs> there's a need everywhere you're right you know and it's only growing more and more by the day amen and then if we, if we understand the needs of someone and how to address those needs with someone from the father mm -hmm. you know that's yeah wow what is one of the greatest strengths and one of the greatest weaknesses right now that um where people can help out with release uh, yep wow um hmm. yeah um i love how i give like questions beforehand and then like it's just like in the moment like the holy spirit is like go here yeah. and I'm just like answer that i wasn't on the list yeah. god that wasn't on the list yeah. <laughs> What was the question again? Yeah, Just forgot. like once, once one of the greatest strengths that uh, Release has to offer right now, um, wow. that churches are like, I want to invest in that. And what's Ooh. one of the greatest weaknesses where churches can, or, or people can say, I want to help with that? Dang. <laughs> uh, greatest strength is, is we actually see a lot of kids from different walks of life. Just give you some examples. Mm -hmm. We mentor kids at homeless shelters. Mm, very wow. private thing, awesome. very sensitive thing. Yeah. We mentor kids at DCY, or, um, DCYC, Sarpy County JJC. Those are youth uh, detention centers. Mm -hmm. We mentor kids in foster homes, group homes. Mm -hmm. We mentor kids at home with mom and dad, or just mom or dad. Wow. Um, we mentor kids from referrals in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I want to brag on our mentors for a little bit. We have a lot of mentors out there with incredible hearts. Mm -hmm. Whether they're a pilot, a baker, mm -hmm. they own a business, an ex-felon that's been obviously has been vetted and, and background sure. checked, all those yeah. things. We have mentors from all types of walks of life who are mm -hmm. able to connect with these kids. Wow. And so just think about this for a second. 
you're 12 years old, male or female, and you're in a, you're in a group home. Mm-hmm. And this is your eighth group home. Mm-hmm. You get to a point where you don't give a rip about adults mm-hmm. at all. So a mentor is huge. Right. Mentor is a non-threatening adult that just you just want to partner with and walk out this challenging life. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's one of the greatest strengths that we have is the number of places where our reach goes. I think I can make this very simple. <laughs> a mentor. Yeah. Sometimes we think it has to be you have to be a teacher. Nope. You have to be uh, someone that can counsel and this and that. No, actually, you need to listen. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to, to express your thoughts yeah. and give just the best counsel that, or the advice that you have with what God gives you. Yeah. And I'll add you to just this. need to be present. Come on. Is that, is that about right? I, absolutely. As well as the kids of these days, they sniff out fake. Yeah. So kids, you gotta keep, come <laughs> right. real. Keep yeah. it real. Yeah. You, I've seen enough where if, kid, if an adult doesn't keep it real, the kid calls it out real quick. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's uncomfortable for the adult. So keeping it real is very necessary. <laughs> when you can just be yourself, it's a lot easier too. That's right. So why why be, try to be someone else that you're not? Be just be you. Yes. That's right. Um, as we finish this up, uh, what is um, what what has God put in your heart recently that just um, you a message for someone out there listening? Yeah. It could be the mentor. It could be someone that is starting in ministry. It could be someone that is growing in the faith. What is one thing that God's put in your heart to share? Yeah, wow, that's a great question. I give this question every episode, and it's always that one message that someone out there needs to hear. Yeah. So you could be speaking to one person or many. That's for God to decide. Amen. Well, um, my one of my favorite scriptures is Proverbs 3, mm-hmm. 5 through 6. And it's just, a, I call it like a one-sentence banger. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, trust in the Lord with all of our hearts, Lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. Mm. So if we think about that one second or that one sentence for a second, trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, brother, but I struggle sometimes trusting with all of my heart. Yeah. Right. Depends on the moment. Yeah. Of the day. Yeah. (laughs) Lean not on your own understanding. I struggle with that all the time. Ask my wife. Yep. (laughs) Right. Yep. And then, um, and then in all your ways, acknowledge him. Now we're talking reverence to the Father, mm-hmm. obedience, mm-hmm. trust, yes. faith. Wow. So that's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite scriptures because it directly ties to the heart, mm-hmm. love, trust, and believing that the, what the Father says is true. What I like is it makes me think of the people I surround myself. I want people around me that keep me on task, keep me going forward, and that build me back up. Because we know this this world is going to knock you down. Man. It's just a matter of when yeah. and how. Wow. So who are you surrounding yourself with? Yeah. Who's building you back up? Come who's on. helping you go further? Come on. And then it also makes me think of the need we have for a savior. If it's if he's not in our life, then we're going nowhere. Yeah. You know, we need him. We need him each and every moment of each and every day. I love that verse. Me too. What's scary about that verse, Jeff, is... Um, and from what I understand, that the only way to the Father is through the Son. Yes. Right? Yes. Jesus was very clear about that. Yes. And the more and more I open my eyes, mm-hmm. I'm not seeing that. Mm. I'm hearing different ways. Yes. Different things. Yep. No. The only way to the Father is through the Son. Yep. If I can go on a little bit further, is mm-hmm. I am 37 years old, 11 years into this walk with the Father, with, with the Lord, and the Father. I am learning more about his attributes. Mm-hmm. Think about Jesus' attributes. Yep. Outside of the church, or outside of us going to church on Sunday or whatever, outside of those four walls, who is Jesus? What is wow. he about? You know, when I started this ministry, and I said, what is it that I believe? There's enough people telling me what I should believe. What is it that I believe? And when I created our statement of faith, I said, you know what, I don't want culture to define it. I don't want a person to define it. I want Jesus and God's word to define it. I want it to be biblically based and not culturally based. I want to be biblically based and not politically based. I want it to go right to God's word. And whatever church I visit or wherever I go, they can say one thing, but I want to go seek it in God's word himself. Be like, all right, God, is that what you say? Come on. You know? 
So thank you for sharing that. I think that alone is huge in this day and age because we know uh, in the Bible way back when it's written, uh, a different author authors said, uh, in the end of days, and it kept referencing that they're in the end of days. And we know that there's gonna be many different words, many different uh, paths that people, uh, different false teachers that are out there. Yes. Well, they're out there right now. Yes. So thank you for sharing that. It is through Jesus. And we need to get back in the word and know it well, because I think that's gonna get twisted left and right. Absolutely. And that's one thing that I love about ministry opportunity is, mm -hmm. whether it's mentoring or missions or whatever it is, mm -hmm for the person watching, for the person evaluating their heart, is what is your understanding of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Who, what is he about? Mm -hmm. What does he say to do? Mm -hmm. Who does he say to reach? Yes. How does he say to yes. reach him? How does he say to love? And I can tell you that for me personally and my family, like we're here to serve the Lord and our, our, our ears are tuned in for the garbage. Right. We oh, don't look yes. for it, but we're oh, yeah. tuned in. If we smell yeah. or see it, we stop, we pray for that yeah. or whatever, whoever, whatever. But we just realized how easy it is to lavitate yep. and just we have to stay rooted and yeah the world will bring you garbage and make it look great yeah and it'll be wrapped up with chains and bondage and it'll keep you uh held back from the plans god has for you yes but yeah god and his plans for us his word for us everything he has for us is freedom it's just do we want to see what the world offers us which is deception yes. or the truth and that is what christ has for us well, what does and it that's say about freedom and yeah says it's free yeah. last question for you yeah and i, I love asking this question yeah. what is one of your greatest walk in faith stories where you say you know what god i trust in you i may wow. not see the road i may not see the path but you do mm. yeah well uh Yep. In 2006, I was arrested mm -hmm. in Sarpy County um, with three drug trafficking charges. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's not okay, especially in Sarpy yeah. County. For those that know, don't play in Sarpy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so here I am, 25 years old, facing 60 years. Mm -hmm. um, at the time that I was arrested, I had seven charges on my adult record already. So wow. they weren't pending, they were right. on my record. Right. So you can imagine trying to find a job, wasn't right. happening. A lot of rejection, a lot of um, shame and things. Mm -hmm. And I went on a missions trip to Bogota, Colombia, of all places. It's crazy. And I, um, <laughs> I linked up with a pastor, yeah. Pastor Juan Carlos, who is still in uh, Suba, Colombia to this day. And he was one of the head drug chemists for the Colombian cartel in the 70s and 80s. Wow. And I had a chance to meet this guy mm -hmm. and connect with him to this day. Still talk to him, still talk to the missionaries in Colombia. And when I was in Colombia, was when I just got saved. Felt very weird being over there for obvious reasons mm -hmm. because of my past. And it was one of the first times I heard the Father speak directly to my heartstrings. And I'll never forget this, Jeff. I was crying. I was standing on top of a mountain in a place called Monst Mount Monstrot or something like that. Whatever. <laughs> Um, hey, I couldn't even say that, no, I mean, so yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> and it was pouring rain, and I remember standing at the edge of this cliff, bawling, and I asked him, if you say that you are who you say you are, how can I move forward in life with three pending traffic mm -hmm. charges of 60 years and seven charges on my record? It makes no sense. Yep. And I heard him say, Marcus, keep walking, and I will make a way. <laughs> the way maker. Jeff, here I am today. Uh, I've been in I've been in ministry 11 years. Praise the mm -hmm. Lord! I've been able to start a family and raise a family yep. ministry. Those seven charges that were on my record have since been set aside. Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, yeah, I've had to go in front of all all those judges who at one point said, "Mr. Brown, guilty." Yep. Mr. Brown, yep. no longer yep. not guilty. Had the letters at my house still to this day. Three trafficking charges were erased and expunged. Wow. Um, Here's something crazy I shared that I had to let the government or the state come in and seize my property. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. So when I talk to kids, yeah. I'm like, hey, who here's been grounded? Hands go up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who here, who here's had some stuff seized? Ooh, what does that mean? Right, right, right. So, brother, all I'm saying is, is here, I, we're sitting on this campus that I've been employed at for 11 years when I should be upstate. Mm -hmm. So that tells me 
that it's not about me, it's about him. Yeah. So whether it's a kid in a cell or a missions trip with Urban Plunge or even building yeah. a house in North Omaha two blocks away, that's what my wife wow. and I have done. Here's what I'm hearing. I'm here in Romans 8. Um, all good things work together for, uh, for those who love Christ. Yes. Uh, for those who he foreknew, he predestined, mm. he called, he justified, and then he glorified. Mm. Brother, you are qualified. He qualified you. He said those things don't define you. And so that's for someone out there right now as well. Uh, whatever you're going through, uh, if it, in the middle of the storm, that storm doesn't define you. Not at all. Uh, he has plans for you. Uh, he will call you to something greater. You that's just right. have to trust in him. You went from seven charges, uh, a seizures, uh, a, a, a um, property seizure, um, behind bars, mm -hmm. not time. having a way, to having a family, to being a parent, to being called into ministry, to discipling and leading and mentoring others and helping them prevent them from doing what you've done. That's right. Wow, God is good. Yes, he is. Wow. Praise, praise the King. Let's finish in prayer. Amen. Uh, Father, we just thank you for today. Lord, we just thank you for this uh, this message. Uh, Lord, uh, <laughs> you find hope in a plan where there is no hope and no plan. Lord, you find a way when there is no way. Lord, we thank you for being God. We thank you for being the way maker, yes. for being each and everything that we need when we need it. Uh, Lord, you are more than we can ask for. Yes. You are greater than we can imagine. You are, you are the Lord of lords the king of kings what you say is life uh father we just thank you for marcus we thank you for his family yes. this ministry all the families being affected all the, the the children being um um having a new plan a new path to put in front of them yes. instead of what the world puts in front of them father we pray that there's more mentors coming we pray yes. for more uh discipleship we pray for uh just your your blessing to overflow in their lives the mentories lives in this ministry all this we pray in jesus name amen amen thank you all for tuning in today god bless thank you